With the polar vortex rearing its ugly mug and the sounds of Christmas just deafening my ears, the only thing that's really left for us to do this year is just kind of reflect and look back. Maybe at how your year came out or how it is in comparison to the other years that we just came out of because it's been a pretty big shit show recently. And since this is an anime channel, still pending, it got me to think about shows that I've seen that I don't really think about nowadays. I mean, you have some of those, right? Shows that you swear that you've watched all the way through and then after you finish watching them, you kind of just forget about them until they just pop into your head for no good reason at all. Oh, wait. You don't have a show like that? Oh, well, I guess I'll just share mine. Yeah, the show that's been plaguing my head has been none other than another. Hi guys, I'm Bayfund, and what? Did you really expect me to talk about a show that came out this year? Come on, I don't really do that unless it's a show that's seasonally airing, like, you know, Mob Psycho and Chainsaw Man. Reviews pending. But let's jump into this once anime giant. Another is a 2012 horror anime, and this show was absolutely massive. It kind of serves as baby's introduction to horror anime and manga in general. Got a lot of people into that medium, and the main reason that it's popular isn't because of its superior writing, character development, story structure, none of that. No, it's popular because of things like this umbrella scene. <laughs> it's the kind of show that if you were a kid watching this, it would have absolutely traumatized you and made you stay away from things like, you know, umbrellas. And from this you can tell, yeah, the main draw was its shock value. Characters in this show drop like flies dropped into a meat grinder. It's absolute mayhem seeing some of these character deaths and you probably don't expect how they're gonna go down. And the show can be absolutely terrifying at times. If you're a fucking child. I kid, I kid. But also not really. Because this show in its first few episodes builds up the atmosphere to a great deal. I mean, you can really tell that this town is kind of fucked up. Things are a lot creepier than what they should be for what they're doing. And the first couple plot beats that we're introduced to make you want to actually follow the story and figure out what's going on. All of these things are golden until they're undercut by like the most wacky shit to happen on screen. Misaki. But that's where the charm comes in. If it didn't have wacky shit like this just come onto the screen, then I probably wouldn't remember it enough for me to talk about this years after watching it. Like for instance, it's set up from a very early point that a lot of these characters are going to die. And that doesn't mean that that's an excuse to make the characters underwritten and unlikable. No, they actually try to give them decent characterization. There's some characters that are considered to be tragic. In some cases, they actually try to overdo that by making them over important at times. But even at their most generic, I still kind of enjoyed all of the characters in our roster here, even though I knew that a lot of them were going to end up as cannon fodder. I would say the most basic character in our entire show here is our protagonist, Koichi, who starts off really interesting. You want to know what's really going on with him, if there's anything under the surface that might lead to any clues going on to the story. But he's kind of sort of a boring guy, and it's kind of understandable for a series like this, because if you got someone just bursting at the scenes with personality, they would steal the spotlight away from the mystery history and the aura that's like they're trying to build up. And this dark menacing vibe is pretty much exemplified in one character perfectly. Our main heroine, Mai, who my god is that a fucking eye patch? Done deal. That's best girl right there. You can put her on a pedestal with all the other eye patch girls. Yep, she ranks among the best of them right there. She's also a coup that is, so it kind of sort of makes sense as to why she has a similar naming scheme as some other characters that might look or act like her. And we follow them to try and uncover the mystery of what's happening to this class, which they find out in like the first three episodes. And so the rest of the show is basically trying to solve this issue. And I gotta say, for all of its eccentricities, for like its gore and over the top nature, I was actually really invested in this mystery that was going on. Even though the rules were laid out pretty early on, I wanted to figure out who was it in this whodunit situation. I mean, anytime that this Snape ass motherfucker gave out any kind of like more info, I was all ears. But I gotta tell you, I wasn't like incredibly obsessed over this entire series. I mean, back when this was coming out, people would make this their entire identity. Kind of like they were trying to say that there wasn't another horror anime or manga to come out before or since then. But I kind of just hold the opinion of 
this being good and watching it more for the absurdities that were going on. The animation in music are really well done. The OP isn't my cup of tea when it comes to music, but it's still something that it's really recognizable. And this art style that they chose to go with is something that was so uniform that you can actually expect to think that this is something that came out maybe a few years ago, not 10. The only thing that I think really shows its age is like I said before, that visual novel-esque kind of like aesthetic for the sky that they show at times. I mean, to be honest, sometimes these backdrops look like they're from a visual novel that's a hundred times more fucked up than this story could ever dream to be. But it still helps out setting the tone. I just have one personal gripe with the show, and this isn't something that I would say everyone's gonna share. And it's that the ending of this was something that caught me so off guard that I think it's really fucking stupid at times. The way that they set up the characters and the story and everything revolving the mystery was really kind of sort of backhanded, thrown away at the very end for more shock value. And it 100% did serve its goal by shocking me completely, but I just thought that it was like, oh, that's the route we went with. And I don't really know why this series drifted into the front of my mind recently, but it's really got me thinking about how this used to be the big anime of its time. I mean, series now get live action adaptations all the time, but back then it was a bit more rare. It kind of goes to show that even your favorite shows that are airing right now are probably gonna fade to obscurity in like the next five years, no matter what, with people just maybe remembering a handful of scenes or maybe the most shocking one of them all. This is just gonna serve as a testament to that. And as always, I was Bayfond. And I'll see you guys, hopefully before New Year's. Peace.